everyone. Here is how I put together this little smock shirt inspired after Prince Louis. Is it Louis or Louis? I don't know. But it's inspired after the outfit that he wore to his grandmother's birthday party a few months ago. I used the Children's Corner Jamie pattern as a starting off point for this outfit. And you can swap the boy sleeves for the puffy girl style sleeves for, you know, a girl shirt. As always, all the materials and timestamps are linked down below. So to get started, I pulled out the size 12 month pieces for my little guy. And from there, I'm selecting the collar, sleeve, yoke back and yoke front pieces. Then I start cutting out my pieces. When I cut the yoke front piece, I'm going to cut all the way around that pattern piece. So it's not going to be cut on the fold. Remember, I'm just using this pattern as a starting off point. So I'm going to cut out four pieces total, two for the garment and two for the lining. Next, I'm cutting out the yoke back, which is actually going to be a full shirt back. So a few things that I'm changing. First, I'm spacing the fold line of the pattern about one inch away from the fold of the fabric. And this will give me some space to insert an inverted box pleat later on. So I measure my little guy and found that 11 inches was a good length from the base of his neck to the hem. So keep in mind that this garment is going to be tucked into his shorts, or at least that's the style after the Prince Louis. So I count for that additional length as well as about half an inch to hem the shirt. So I drew a line at the 13 inch mark, being careful that I was square with the fold of my fabric. Then I took a straight edge, which happened to be the book on fine machine sewing since I couldn't find my quilting edge. Uh, just a side note, I bought this book a few months back and I've only had the chance to skim through it. But if you want a very thorough heirloom, you know, kind of by machine type of book. This seems like a great choice and I will have it linked down below. So anywho, I'm using this straight edge to connect the bottom of the sleeve to the bottom of the shirt. I'm angling the book just slightly outward and it's not rocket science, so don't overthink it. So after I'm done with the lines, I'm just gonna cut out the pattern piece and I notch where the fold line is so I know where to put that inverted box pleat later on. Then I cut out the sleeve, which I added an inch and a half to the bottom of the sleeves since the shirt on Prince Louis looks a little bit longer and has kind of a deeper hem to it. If you're doing the girl's sleeve, you could leave it the same size, you could add some length if you wish, you could make it a longer puffy sleeve, whatever. You know how I like to say it, it is sewing so you do you. And finally, I cut out the collar on the fold. The collar as it comes in Jamie is designed for the back of the garment to open and the front of the garment to be closed. So meanwhile, we have reversed this garment to be modeled after this shirt. So now we can have one continuous collar instead of two collars together. I hope that makes sense. So additionally, I cut out two strips for the center front of the shirt. I originally did these at four inches total with the idea that I could fold them in half and then take half an inch on each side due to a seam allowance. But you'll see later on that I'm actually almost halving this dimension. So I would recommend instead doing a two and a half inch wide strip instead and then folding that in half and taking half an inch seam allowance on each side would give you a finish width of three quarters of an inch. I hope that's not confusing. Remember, I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. So to construct the bottom parts of the front of the shirt, at first I measure the bottom of my front yoke piece. Remember, I'm doing a 12 month size and that gives me a measurement of about five inches. So I'm gonna take that and multiply it by three. So in my case, I marked about 15 inches since that's five inches times three for the pleating ratio. And then I placed the back yoke piece and lined it up so the seams would all line up, if that makes sense. <laughs> if you place the front yoke on top of that assembly, you can see how everything is going to line up from the shoulder seam down to the seam joining the yoke to the front of the smock piece. So from there, I simply placed the back section so it lined up with the armhole and all of that jazz. And then I use the back piece as a pattern piece for the side seam since I added a slight angle to it and wanted to repeat the same angle. Now to get the length of the front sections, I just transferred the length from the back section with a little clip and then ripped along the grain. And then here are my two front sections. So I ran these front sections through my pleater. Of course, this is sewing, so you do you. But if you want to recreate the little shirt that Prince Louis wore, then I would suggest pleating 14 half space rows. This is my best guess on what the smocking plate is going to require, which does give you a holding row on both the top and bottom of the smocking area. So you're only going to be smocking 12 spaces. From there, I started the blocking process by pulling out the threads on the straight edge of the front of these sections. So I'm pulling out, so it's about half an inch of space to use in the seam allowance. 
Then I have tied off those threads in groups of twos or threes and trimmed off the excess. I have pulled all the threads taut before I worked on the other side. And the photos are not great for showing the detail of the smocking, but it does seem like the pleats are going around the armhole instead of just stopping at one pleat and going straight down. I hope that makes sense. So I'm doing my best to pull the threads out so the pleats kind of go around the armhole with about a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And when it comes to blocking, I find it easiest to get the length correct first and then adjust the pleat. So I'm using the front yoke piece to match up the length for the pleats. And then I tie off those threads and trim them up. Finally, I adjust the pleats so they were evenly distributed and you guess it, here comes the freezer paper. If you are new to my channel, I love this stuff for securing pleats while you sew over top of them to join that seam. It is super quick and gives just fabulous results. I have a whole separate video that details the process. If you'd like to see it, it is linked down below. Before joining the lining to the yoke of the garment, I turned the bottom edge and ironed that in place. Then I put the wrong sides together with the garment and I sew around the neckline and armhole area just kind of basing the two together. And then I moved on to that center band and I'm sure there's a better name for it but it is escaping me at the moment so I'm just going to call it the center band. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, I later reduced the dimension of the band since I didn't like how it looked when I was all done but regardless of what size you choose, the construction steps are the same. So to begin, I folded both of these long raw edges under about quarter of an inch yeah, Henry, and iron them down in place. Then I fold those iron edges until they meet each other, and then I give that an ironing. And from there, I sandwich the front of the garment between the folded band, making sure that the edges are in line with each other so everything will get caught in the seam. And then I take it to my machine and I sew the band together with the front of the garment. I try to keep the stitches right next to the edge of the fold since I think that looks better. And I also try to keep the band right next to the last pleat since again, I think it looks better without any gaps. Then I move on to the back of the garment. First, I'm going to put it that inverted box pleat at the top of the neckline and to do this, I fold one side under until it meets the center back and I repeat the same thing to the other side, folding that under until it meets the center back. And then I give it an iron and down and I baste it into place. Then I join the back of the shirt with the front of the shirt at the shoulder seams using French seams. And I have a detailed video. I have a detailed video linked down below on how to do French seams. So next I moved on to the collar and I sew the collar pieces together with right sides together. Then I turn the collar right sides out and I use this little pointer tool. It's linked down below to help push the seam out. I give the collar a really good ironing and then I attach it to the neckline of the shirt. I'm just placing it right on top of the shirt so the wrong side of the collar will be touching the right side of the shirt. And there you go with those smaller band widths that I've been talking about. I redid them so they were about three quarters of an inch wide. For now, I'm gonna pause on the collar since the last step isn't my favorite part. So I'm moving on to those sleeves, I turn up the bottom edge about a quarter of an inch and then again about an inch or maybe an inch and a quarter, I can't remember exactly. So I lengthen my stitch a little bit and stitch along the edge. I only lengthen my stitch a little bit so my sleeve could accept an embellishment inspired by Prince Louis' shirt. If I wasn't doing this based around his shirt, then there's no reason to lengthen your stitches. I probably would have stitched it by hand or added some lace or something like that for a girl's version. So I ease my sleeve since I'm working on the boys version and I have a detailed video on how to do this that is linked down below. If you are doing the girls version then you'll do two rows of gathering stitches so you can create a puffy sleeve and I have many other tutorials that demonstrate this construction. To finish the sleeve seam I'm trimming half of the seam allowance so I can turn the other seam allowance over to create a mock French seam later on by hand. I like to save all my hand sewing until the end whenever possible. So for now I'm just going going to iron that down in place and make sure the folded edge stays folded as I take it to my machine to sew the side seams together using French seams. Then I move on to the hem of the shirt and since this style is going to be tucked into those shorts, I'm just turning that edge up about a quarter of an inch twice and then sewing it down on the machine. Of course, it's sewing so you do you. A lace edge would have looked really sweet on this style too, kind of more of like a diaper shirt for a girl, but there's a number of different embellishments that can be done. So then let's finish up that collar and this step really isn't that hard, I just don't prefer to do it. So I take a bias band that is about a one and a half inches wide and I fold that in half and give it an 
ironing. Then it's really helpful if you put a curve into your bias band since this band is going to go around the neckline. It just it just makes the process come together better. I pinned the bias band so there's a little bit extra sticking past the finished edges of the shirt and I'll fold these ends in later. I sew the bias band to the collar and the rest of the shirt and then I trim up those ends of the bias band so there's about half an inch extra as well as trimming up that seam. Then I fold the band over and sew that into place. I do skip over the band section since I don't want the machine stitches to show from the front of the shirt. The collar will hide the machine stitches and I'll sew the areas at the front band down by hand later on. Now you can join the shirt with machine buttonholes, hand done buttonholes, snaps with mock buttons or just snaps, whatever you wish it is sewing so you do you. If you want to see how I did the smocking inspired by Prince Louis, there is another video that is linked down below that goes over those details. I hope this video was helpful. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them and as always, I I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.